Listening to Relatable with Stephanie Michelle only on LA Talk Radio. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Relatable. I'm your host, Stephanie Michelle, and this show is going to get dedicated to my brand new niece, Dahlia Faye. So, congratulations, Amberly, my niece, and her family who had their second child yesterday. And we're going to dedicate the whole show to her and her family. Um, and yes, if you're paying attention to the details, that does make me a great aunt. Don't ask me my age, just go with this, that I'm a great aunt. Um, and I actually love this title. I think it's the only one that you can, the only title that I can have where I can add great in front of it and still be so humbled and, and have it be so rewarding. If I try to add great in front of any of my other titles, it would just be weird. So um, yesterday, you know, as we were getting news, my niece is in Texas, and as we were getting news about um, her status of her labor, you know, I hoped for the best. I hoped that it was an easy birth. I hoped that she was going to have a healthy child. And um, as you know, once once she arrived, and once Dahlia arrived, and the family shared both that the baby was both baby and mom were good, I found myself drifting to thoughts of the future. What kind of woman would my new niece be? What will the world be like when she's an adult? There are a lot of worries in those thoughts, I have to admit. My new niece is going to be bombarded with all kinds of new information and probably a lot more technology um, as she grows up. Some of it will be helpful and some of it will be very harmful. It won't be easy, yet I'm hopeful and thinking every, everything that she has, she was born with yesterday. She was born with a spirit that's greater than her little body can contain right now. That spirit is connected to her, connects her to her family, and allows them to care for her and lets her trust and love freely. She won't know fear for a while. She might experience a little pain, but she'll fast forget it as she discovers her little fingers and toes. And as she makes noises and people go, oh, how cute. Um, she will be marveled by using her body to roll over and walk and stand while others just watch in pure delight. We are born with, pure, with a pure connection to a loving spirit, to ourselves and to others. It's all there from the beginning, yet, to, yet it's incredibly easy to lose sight of this along the way by information that's intended to distract us from being able to make the best decisions for our well-being. Our best events to prevent harm and to be well is our own bodies. Paying attention to those thoughts and feelings, paying attention when pain we are experiencing in the body is connected to strong feelings, paying attention to how we feel after eating certain foods, and listening to the body when it asks us to move, stretch, and rest. What I'm saying and what we've been exploring in this Body is Your Ally series is just focus on the present, dealing and releasing things as they come up as a preventative means to protect the best parts of you your ability to heal and love. What we haven't talked about yet in this series is what, what if there's already an accumulation of pain in the body? It, if you are past the point of being able to be preventative and present to what your body, to what's going on with your body because there's physical pain, this is the episode for you. So I'm delighted to be joined today with my guest, Amy B. Share. She is an LA-based expert in mind-body healing and the author of the best-selling book, How to Heal Yourself When No One Else Can. This is available on Amazon and all bookstores, and we'll share links afterwards in terms of where you can get it. After years of struggling from illness, chronic Lyme disease, autoimmune conditions, nerve damage, endometriosis, I can't believe I said that without stumbling, <laughs> <laughs> and anxiety, Amy set out to heal herself when doctors had given up hope. Amy now uses energy therapy techniques to help those experiencing emotional and physical challenge to heal permanently and completely. She lives by her self-created motto, 
which I love. <laughs> when life kicks your ass, kick back. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. I'm so glad that we're doing this episode on the eve of my niece being born. It's Congratulations. Just, I know how special this time is. Yeah. She And she put her in an outfit that I sent her, which even makes it, you Aww. know, because I'm not there. So how else can I, yeah. you know, feel connected to it? So she's wearing a little floral outfit that I sent her. Oh, so I cute. love it. Cute to see. So before we get into today's topic which is a good one and i you know just think that there's so many people listening that could benefit from what we're going to explore i always ask the guests is there anything that you just want to clear that might be distracting you from having this conversation just want to put out there before we get started thank you for asking even though i sat in la traffic i'm actually <laughs> very present and excited to be here i think the green background woke me up <laughs> yeah. and your smiley face so thank you for asking but i'm ready all right yeah. i love it all right well then let's let's dig into the past before we get into the present what was your life like before you decided to go on this self-healing journey so I had a pretty normal, fun upbringing, you know, just the same, not not perfect, but the same stuff kind of everybody deals yeah. with and always had sort of stomach issues, strep throat over and over, even when I was younger, mm -hmm. and but nothing, nothing huge. Um, when I was in my early 20s, I started to have major symptoms of chronic nausea. I started to have really terrible menstrual cycles where I would end up in the hospital over and over. I had multiple surgeries. I had a lot of anxiety. I had chronic fatigue. I had mono. I had like every, it seemed like everything in the world. And I'm sure some of our listeners today can relate where it just seems like, why do I have everything? Yeah. Um, and then when I was in my mid 20s, I ended up with neuropathy, mm -hmm. which is nerve damage. And it started in my toes, went up my legs, and then ended up in my upper limbs as well. Mm -hmm. And nobody could find a cause for it. And many people know about neuropathy because a lot of people who suffer from diabetes end up with neuropathy or nerve damage. But they, I didn't have diabetes, and they mm -hmm. couldn't figure out what it was. Well, I was eventually diagnosed with chronic Lyme disease, and Lyme disease is most often transmitted by certain types of ticks. Mm -hmm. And I was bitten, unbeknownst to me, ticks are tiny like the size of the tip of a pen. Mm -hmm. So the majority of people don't know that they're bitten, and you know, sometimes you can get a rash, sometimes you don't. I didn't get the rash. So it turned out that all of these various symptoms were from Lyme disease that had gone undiagnosed and untreated. And what happened was my body became, I mean, I became debilitated mm -hmm. with the nerve damage. I couldn't, you know, open a water bottle myself or wash my hair. My arms didn't and work. this is what age are you at this point? I was 25. Wow, okay. I was mostly bedridden mm -hmm. um, on lots of different medications, trying treatment after treatment after treatment. And when I was 28, when I just turned 28, I found out about a... Um, clinic in India that was doing stem cell treatment, very experimental, very uh, sort of like a shot in the dark kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. But by that time, all of the doctors that I had been to in the United States had done what they could for me. And so while some of those treatments did help me improve, I was never like a normal 20 something year old. Mm -hmm. I was still, you know, in a lot of pain on narcotic pain medication, exhausted all the time, all kinds of, you know, all kinds of, um, you know, things that made my life hard, really, really hard to live. Mm -hmm. And so I took this chance and I went to India for this stem cell therapy, not knowing really if it would cure me or kill me because it could have done, done either and my doctor predicted it would kill me and didn't want me to go. Mm -hmm. And I went and it helped a lot. It helped to rebuild my immune system. It helped to repair a lot of nerve damage I had. And I left India after about eight weeks, like wow. a totally different person. Yeah. Like, off most of my medication doing really really well and I thought great I'm cured I'm just gonna like move on with my life now and I think now when I talk to people who are struggling with illness and experiencing different types of physical symptoms that's what they want to do is they want to find a fix mm -hmm. and then move on mm -hmm. and that's exactly where I was and there's nothing wrong with that but what I learned about a year later was that's not typically how it works so I went home from India, I started living my life again, and about a year later, I started getting a, a recurrence of symptoms. So I never got back to the place that I started when I went to India, but I could feel that my body was falling apart in the same way. Mm -hmm. And what that led me to sort of discover was that healing isn't all physical. Mm -hmm. Well, I should say permanent and complete healing isn't all physical. 
So I think during all of my treatments and during that time in India, I sort of forced the physical repair of my body by all these modern amazing treatments, mm -hmm. but didn't, didn't really look inside to see why all of this was happening. And so my body started to go through the same process it went through before because I wasn't doing anything different to sort of change the trajectory of my life. Mm -hmm. And that's when I decided when I was out of money, totally <laughs> disgusted, out of energy, out of options, I had already been you know, across the world, that I would turn inward mm -hmm. and look there for answers instead. And that began my self-healing journey. Why there? You know, so you could, um, what, what was calling you to kind of look inward instead of like looking at Google or, you know? What, what? I think it was the only thing I hadn't really done. done. Okay. I was like, yeah. well, I've been to the Mayo Clinic. <laughs> I've been to, you know, Chicago's Northwestern Hospital, one of the best hospitals in the United States. I've been to UCLA. I've been to USC. <laughs> I've been to freaking India. <laughs> I, I don't think that finding another hospital or another doctor or another clinic is what's going to do it because if that was the answer i've surely been to enough great doctors i've done enough amazing treatments both natural and you mm -hmm. know western or traditional however you want to say it um that it was clear after that many years that that just wasn't the answer or it would have fixed the problem yeah so i had sort of this epiphany that if treating the body doesn't fix the problem, then the body alone can't be what's causing the problem. Right. Because if my unruly body was causing the problem, then all these very specific fixes would have fixed the problem. Right. And although that was totally mind blowing and terrifying for me to realize, it was also really freeing. You know, I think there are so many people, and I was one of them, so I'm gonna talk to anybody who, <laughs> who's this person where it's, I don't want it to be my fault, I don't want it to be my fault. But what you realize is, it's not fault, it's about if I'm part of the manifestation of any problem in my life, I'm also part of the manifestation of the solution. And I sort of freed myself from the it's my fault syndrome in realizing it doesn't really matter. Even if it is my fault, who cares? Like yeah. at this point, why am I gonna be fighting against the principle of who, you know yeah, what I mean, yeah, if yeah. I wanna get better? So, so you, you ran out of options, you're like, oh, let me just look inside because this is the only place I haven't yeah. looked. What um, what was kind of the first thing? So this is a new place for you to look, you know, the, and and nobody's standing at the door going, here's here, pull this book off a shelf. Like, yeah. what did you do first when you're like, oh, I'm gonna kind of just take take a look at what's going on? Yeah. So I feel like it's funny because in my teenage years, I was very spiritual. I loved like reading Ram Dass and all the like Buddhist teachers, mm -hmm. and so I kind of feel like part of that person that I was when mm -hmm. I was a teenager before I was in high school and got like bombarded by what you know boys and fashion and all the things I sh shouldn't have cared so much about <laughs> but I felt like some of that piece of me that I used to be really connected to kind of came back and I started remembering some of the things like I used to read all these books about angels and stuff that n wasn't necessarily now as important but just remembering that person mm -hmm. and a connection to something internal and spiritual um, helped me and so I started reading some books like Louise Hay you Can Heal Your Life, um, Carolyn Mace, mm -hmm. um, Bruce Lipton, Biology of Belief, which I, which I will admit is a little bit over my head, but I grabbed what <laughs> I could from it yeah, and yeah. kind of left the rest. Yeah. Um, just basically over and over what I saw was all of these sort of teachers or authors talking about how our emotions have an effect on our physical body. And I was always one of these people where everybody thought, you know, always said, you're such an optimist and you're always so positive and I don't know how you're still even sort of semi-happy going through all of this. <laughs> but I think when I look back, and I am sort of a natural optimist, mm -hmm. but I'm also a forced happy person in a lot of ways, or I was. So yes, I had that sort of inherent happiness and joyfulness mm -hmm. about me, but on the flip side, I also wasn't willing to acknowledge when that wasn't there. I can relate to that. Yeah. I'd say if I'm a forced happy person too. Yeah. It's like I don't the the alternative doesn't look great for me, you know? Right. So I'll I'll lean this in this direction. Right. So I yeah. think a lot of it that I was reading was that, you know, negative emotions have a negative impact on your body. And instead of telling myself the truth about, well, maybe I do have some negative emotions stuck inside, I was like, I'm not a negative person. I'm fine. I didn't cause this. <laughs> I was like defensive. And it and I think that, you know, we're 
especially in this sort of world of positive psychology, where he's trying to be that happy person or trying to be positive. And really the healing doesn't come in always being positive yeah. and happy. It comes from acknowledging all of it and getting to the place naturally. We've talked about forced positivity yeah. just doesn't work. No, yeah, we've talked about this from the start of the show. Yeah. I had a friend and a guest on in Georgia that um, you know we t we come from a place of it's not about positive or negative. It's about meaningful. Like all yes. emotions are good yes. and meaningful, but it's how we process them and how we store them and release them that helps us, you know, lean towards positivity or lean towards health and well-being. Absolutely. And I'm a Virgo and a perfectionist, and I mean and one of those people who likes to help everybody and save yeah. everybody. So for me, I think I never even entertained the possibility that I couldn't be okay. Like that I could have a miserable day or that I could give up sometimes or mm -hmm. surrender or whatever it meant. And it was sort of during this time in my life where I was like, I think I need to be okay with sometimes not being okay. Mm -hmm. Like I wonder what would happen then. Mm -hmm. Like it was such a sort of revelation to me that when all of these authors and teachers are talking about feeling positive and having a high vibration, they were talking about coming to that place or being in that place naturally, mm -hmm. not forcing yourself there because yeah. that's a fake positivity and that just doesn't do anything for your body. And so that's sort of where I started was looking at what was real. And that was not easy because <laughs> you have to be like, wow, there's a lot of stuff in there I wasn't looking at. Do, do you remember some of the first things that you had to be aware of? Like, ooh, I have this bad attitude towards this or like. I think it was more like a bad attitude toward, to, toward myself, like not letting myself off the hook if I just didn't want to do anything one mm -hmm. day. Like more like perfectionistic type mm -hmm. of thing. Can I relate to that too? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then a lot of just like feeling, ter and I'm still this person to some degree, but feeling terrible if I can't help people like mm -hmm. just wanting to help everybody and wanting everybody to be happy and um you know always trying to save other people from their own emotions and so it was more like that it wasn't like I was a super angry person and mm -hmm. ignoring it um but I just didn't let my sort of un I didn't let myself be unfiltered mm -hmm. I think that's what it would be not that we should all go around 100 percent <laughs> of the time being unfiltered but I think I wasn't <laughs> truthful to myself yeah. about how I felt and yeah. I think that is most damaging to our physical bodies I would agree with that yeah yeah that's what gets stored up and then you've got to deal with that at some point exactly yeah. exactly yeah. and so that's kind of what I was dealing with was looking at you know all of these emotions that maybe I hadn't hadn't you know acknowledged and let go mm -hmm. of and a big one for me was fear mm -hmm. like I always thought when I read about fear like that's not me because I'm not claustrophobic I'm not afraid of heights I'm not but I was like afraid of pretty much everything else <laughs> like speaking up for myself upsetting people um you know being who I was mm -hmm. t talking about my opinions failing not being perfect I mean I was pretty much afraid of every single thing <laughs> ever because sometimes perfectionists that's the worst yeah. thing is not being perfect and there's so much that falls under that umbrella yeah. um, but I was ignoring that sort of fearfulness that was dictating my life because in my mind I didn't have you know some of those fears and phobias mm -hmm. that you think of as fearful yeah but fear has a great impact on our physical body it's like being in constant stress mode so that was one of the things I really looked at. Okay, so <clears throat> we're talking about, so you're exploring the emotional side of what might be causing you pain. When did you really know for sure that there's a connection to the physical pain that you're experiencing? When did you, like? So I think that probably I really knew for sure when I started doing work to release the energy of that fear and, mm -hmm. and the perfectionism. But I think that I felt the truth of it when I read it. Was that work physical? So when you're saying you're doing the work, what was that work? I worked energetically. So I worked on my energy body, okay. which is sort of based on, it could be, ba there's a lot of, there's a lot of modalities, but most people recognize it from working with traditional Chinese medicine mm -hmm. and acupuncturists. They're working with your energy body. There's different pathways in your body and they're made of energy and when something when energy gets stuck or stagnant along these different pathways mm -hmm. that run through your organs glands and muscles then those organs glands and muscles don't get enough energy and blood flow and all the things they need to function so um for instance the energy or the emotion of worry is closely linked to the, st the pathway that runs through the stomach mm -hmm. and sinuses because mm -hmm. it runs up and through your face mm -hmm. so 
a lot of digestive issues can be from energy of worry stuck in that pathway mm-hmm. in the in the body. So I started looking at all these sort of um, correlations, and I was like, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. Yeah. I I should share. I do acupuncture. Yeah. I, um, when it, when I'm not well, I'll do it frequently as much as I have to to get over something and then I do it once a month this is my week to come see my girl Um, once a month I'll do it just to kind of check in and trying to explain to somebody (coughs) that doesn't do acupuncture or is like really energy work Stephanie you've been in California too long Um, you know (laughs) it's it's difficult but I will say like when you I I 100% have experienced this so I know that there's some connection and I've gone in you know feeling sad and like in and telling my practitioner and you know and she puts the needles in a certain place and then I actually physically can feel that what they call it chi but you know you can call whatever you want it's like this flow of energy going through my body and then I take the most amazing needle nap you know why the needles are in and then I wake yeah I love it it's like my favorite thing to do and then I wake up and I'm like woo all this new energy like so you know you can't until you can be on the other side going, oh, energy work. She's talking about energy yeah. work again. But until you experience it and experience the other side of it and know, oh, I actually can feel better. Like, I've gotten used to feeling pain. I've gotten used yeah. to feeling stress. And I think that there's nothing else out there. But yet, right. there is. <laughs> right. you know? And I always think, too, like, I might have been one of these people who would have thought what I do now is totally crazy. But the thing is, I think when we have all these judgments about different modalities or whatever, like we have to stop and be like, is this really helping? Like, what is the point of these judgments? Like for me, I was like, all the things I was discovering seemed a little bit like woo woo. That's like maybe the word I would use. But then it's the same thing about when I was fighting against myself about if I was, if it was my fault. It's like, who cares? Like, do I really care? Because if I want to feel better. Yeah then you have nothing to lose right and at this point when we're when we're making judgments about treatments or making judgments about ourselves there's one person to blame for blocking ourselves and it's us and how ridiculous is that when you're working so hard to feel better that then you're going to let one opinion or judgment about what seems silly you know but i think when you get to a point where you're really really ready to feel better you don't care what's silly. Like, no, if you want to feel good, you just don't care. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And until then, maybe it's just not time. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Uh, okay. So we're to the point. You, you address the emotional. You know. So you went and addressed the emotional. You started doing energy work. Um, when did you shift into like, oh wait a second, I want to do this work for other people? So it was probably about like a month after I started the energy work for myself that I wouldn't say my physical symptoms immediately got better, but I had like this sense of sturdiness Mm -hmm. and calmness inside of me that I I recognized as a really great shift for me. Mm -hmm. Like I started to relax more. I started to leave the dishes in the sink overnight. (laughs) Like maybe that's not a great idea, but I was like, this is a, this is amazing for me. (laughs) Um, And then it was like within a few months after that, that I started seeing some physical differences from releasing this anxiety and this fear of being who I really was and all of this stuff. And it wasn't until I healed completely and permanently. So I basically ended up healing all of my symptoms using this emotional work. And um, you're not on medication. Do I wasn't doing any supplements. I wasn't doing mm-hmm. any medication because I was so disgusted. I just put everything away. I was like, I can't do this. And and now, I mean, I have a full time energy therapy practice where I help clients. I am in no way, shape or form against supplements or mm-hmm. medication or whatever. But for me, it was so crystal clear that those things, if they were going to help me, would have already helped me that I just was like, what's the point? They're Mm -hmm. so expensive, all these different supplements, and and I didn't see a real difference. So Mm -hmm. for me, I did it all with energy work, and I think for me that was probably important and for my story, because I saw such a black, I wasn't doing anything but emotional work, so I could clearly, as somebody who can be sort of a doubter and a, oh, what's this crazy woo-woo stuff, I saw just such a clear-cut difference. People are gonna hate me for saying this, but I'm gonna say it anyways. don't, Don't you feel, like, if you're taking medication that's connected to you labeling your sickness, like, what, uh, you're labeled by that sickness now, like, how could you possibly overcome it? You know, like, am I, I right. mean, it's like, there's something about, like, uh, just once I say, well, I have this, and I'm going to take this to confirm right. that I have this, 
what are the chances of getting over it? Well, I think like there can be, I think tying yourself to an illness or needing this or the idea that you need this medication for the rest of your life, Mm -hmm. that can be really dangerous as far as what you're putting out there in the universe and what you're telling the cells of your body. But I also think that in order for some people to take the leap and have enough relief in the short term to do the deep work, Mm -hmm. relying on supplements and medication and physical support isn't a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I think they can definitely work together. I think it's not so much as what you're taking as how you're connecting to it and if you're dependent on it. So, I mean, I I would say probably 50% of my clients take supplements or medication or Mm -hmm. whatever and they always ask me about it. What do you think? Mm -hmm. And I say, I think you should do whatever you can get behind and feel good about. Some people would be so terrified to be doing nothing except the emotional work Mm -hmm. that that it wouldn't be productive for Mm -hmm. them. And some people, I mean, I think that I think that whatever we find that we can feel good about is good as long as we meet that medicine or that supplement halfway and do our part too, because those things alone don't don't typically work. What's coming up for me is like Amy's inviting you to pick your own level of woo woo. (laughs) (laughs) Right, right. 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 You can do, you know, it's this check in with your body to go. You know what? I'm not ready to not take that, or I need that, or I'm going to try this, and let's see what if this combination of things work together. Right, and I think also it can be a little bit dangerous. I've, you know, being in this sort of world for years, there are some people who are totally against, you know, traditional or Western medicine. Mm-hmm. And and that can be harmful because if I break my leg, there's no way I'm going to sit there and do energy medicine. Like, I'm going to go to the hospital. <laughs> right, like, there's right, a time right. and place for everything. Right. And I think there's an incredible author, Bernie Siegel, who wrote um, several books, but he used to be a, a surgeon and mm-hmm. he worked with people with cancer. And he basically says that medication and surgery buy you time to, to do what you have to do to, to heal yourself. And that's mm. how I feel. And I think it's okay to have those things. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes they work as long as you do the things inside to help them and to make sure you don't need them forever. Mm-hmm. That's kind of my feeling. Um, we'll share, I'll ask you that again at the end of the sure. show, or we'll share those resources yeah. on some of the books that you talked about earlier too. Um, all right, so you know you've researched this, you've done your own work on it, and you're working with clients. Um, what would you say? It, what's the secret or the why behind some some people being able to take this heal yourself path, and yeah. some people not being able to do it? So I think it's all. Everybody's path is so different. I think everyone can do it. I think it takes a lot longer for some people than they want it to. Mm. I think there are a lot of beliefs we have that block us, like I can't do it, mm. or um, you know, I mean, I can't do it, or it's it's not for me. Amy could do it, but I can't do it. Um, I think that you know we're all just so different that I think being we talk about you know judging different modalities. Mm. I think being open and receiving, and being willing to do whatever mm-hmm. is really really important and just sort of throwing caution to the wind and going, you know what, this seems totally weird, but I'm gonna try it. And Mm -hmm. I usually say that with new clients is some of the stuff we do today might seem weird, but can you just roll with it? Cause it'll help you. Like just for once, just let go. Yeah, it it feels like what what I'm hearing and you saying this, that even though we're talking about being present and you know, figuring out you're going internal and having these conversations with yourself about what you're gonna try, the step before that is going, I don't know. You know, yeah. it's like kind of a surrender. Like, you know what? I'm open for anything at this point. And that makes a huge difference. When I have the hardest clients for me to help are the ones that come to me with a list of what they already know or think is right and wrong, what they've already done, what they what they know they don't need to try now, what they've already taken care of, so I shouldn't bring this up because mm. they've already worked on that. And those are the hardest people to help because they those same patterns of control and blocking themselves and not being willing to kind of let go and be imperfect, those things stress our body out and those things are not conducive to the healing process. So my favorite clients are the ones that just come and just go, <laughs> I'm open for anything. Let's see what comes up. Yeah. And and in that freedom that they give themselves, we find things that they haven't worked on before, things that aren't so obvious, things that they haven't been telling a therapist for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And those are the things that make a difference. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you believe behind every physical pain there's some sort of emotional 
issue or a challenge there? I would say yes. That's a tough question because mm -hmm. then people say to me, well, what about when I broke my back or what about, mm -hmm. but I do find, I mean, I've had lots of clients that will come to me and say, I was, you know, in a car accident. This happened to my neck. I have the x-rays to prove it and the MRI to show and we do energy work and after 10 years of them not being able to move in their neck, they can't. Mm -hmm. So what I think is that emotional energy can weaken any area in your body where it's stuck mm -hmm. and that can, can, can cause a physical issue. So I don't think there's only physical or only emotional. Mm -hmm. And I always tell clients and my online course students, let's just see what happens. Because I've seen a lot of things where people come because, you know, even maybe they've, they've hurt, you know, they slammed their finger in mm -hmm. the door. And I mean, clearly that we, we saw that happen. We know it's physical, but emotional stress prevents us from healing at the rate that we could, and it can block us completely. So I would say yes, that every physical pain has some emotional element that we can work on to help improve that. Yeah, and what I'm hearing too, and what you're saying, so perhaps you did break your back or you had an yeah. accident and emotional pain didn't cause the accident obviously but the how you approach the healing yeah that's what's getting in the way of the healing there might be some emotional stuff there that's getting in the way of how you heal from that absolutely so so i we're never denying there's a physical element i don't need people sending me their x-rays yeah. and going but what about this yeah. my doctor said or you know i i mean from what i've seen in the past years working with thousands of people all, there's always some kind of emotional energy that you can work on to either clear it completely or improve your healing rate or do something to make it better. Okay, so let's let's talk about that. So um, you've experienced a lot of different energy healings and now you offer them. This is what yeah. you do in your work. Can you talk more about what those are? Sure. So if, if the term energy healing or techni yeah. um, techniques is a little new to people, what are some of these things that you use in your practice? Yeah. So I use and teach things that everyone can do for themselves. So nobody comes to my office. I don't put my hands on anybody. You're I, not magical? No, <laughs> I'm not, not magical. <laughs> I think I'm only magical in the way that I give other people the idea that they might be magical, <laughs> but I am not magical. Um, so all of the techniques that I use and all the techniques that are in my book are techniques that everybody can do for free on themselves. You don't need to like grab your husband and ask for help or like summons the neighbor to like do some weird thing. Um, <laughs> these are all things that you can do on your own. So some of the techniques are using tapping on different acupressure points. So there's EFT, which is tapping on different points. Mm -hmm. And what we do there is there's a specific way to do it, but we basically, basically talk about emotional energy that could be keeping us stuck as we mm -hmm. tap. And it helps to release that emotional energy from those energy pathways mm -hmm. we talked about earlier. Um, working with the chakras, which are energy systems, um, energy centers in our body, each chakra holds stories from your childhood, different types of energy. So doing tapping and talking about those. And again, there's a, I'm simplifying it, yeah. but there's specific ways. Um, I also created a technique called the sweep technique, <laughs> like sweeping with a broom. It's a simple script to help clear old stuff from the subconscious mind. These are beliefs like, I'm unable to heal, or I need this illness. You know, there's a lot of talk about that. You know, we, you know, illness is an excuse and people get very defensive, but our subconscious mind is very powerful and there's stuff stuck in there like, I need illness for a million different yeah. reasons. And this technique, the sweep, is a script that helps sweep that out. Because that's not our fault if we need illness, but I'll, I would say 99% of the people I work with do for some reason, no big deal. We just need to find out why your silly brain thinks that and yeah. clear it. Yeah, I mean, if, if you have a belief that's not working um, to change something like yeah. or if you're trying to change a habit or something that you're doing but there's a belief <laughs> behind yeah. why you're doing that forget it yeah <laughs> like it's not gonna happen <laughs> your <laughs> subconscious <laughs> mind is a million times stronger than your willpower yeah. so but that also gives us freedom like a lot of people don't I don't want illness to be my fault or I don't want to feel like I need it I don't need it I've been trying to get better but there's a lot of freedom in just admitting like I always tell my clients if they get upset you know why is this stuck here? But I've worked on this. And I'm just like, you know what? Our brains are silly. Let's clear it and move on. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, we've got to chalk this stuff up to some, you know, like, whatever. We're human. 
So clearing those things. Um, but all of these techniques that I used are all ones that work with emotional energy and all ones that that can be used by yourself mm -hmm. and don't need to be done a specific way. I give guidelines on how I used them and some of them I learned, some of them I created, but I've seen it's been so cool connecting with readers because mm -hmm. they're like, I did this and I changed this and I'm like, awesome, that's so cool because yeah. everybody puts their own spin on things yeah. and I love it. It's, it sounds like a lot of what you believe and what you talk about in your book is it's like a maintenance system. Like we, we are an ecosystem. There is an energy field mm -hmm. that happens that people relate with of who we are. And we do everything else to maintain our bodies. Like yeah. we, you know, we watch what we eat, we sleep, we go get our hair cut or nail stuff. Yeah. Like we, do, uh, we exercise, we do all kinds of other maintenance stuff. But when for some reason, when we get to this one, people are like, oh, no, weird. <laughs> woo, 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 you know? Right. Like, and I always tell people, like, this is the one, this is, like, totally free. I mean, you might, the cost of a book yeah. or whatever yeah. if you need some tools. Or, you know, you might need help from a practitioner from time to time to help get you unstuck or whatever. But generally speaking, these are things you can do every day with no tool. No, you don't need crystals. You don't need, I mean, you don't, I mean, I love crystals. Nothing against <laughs> crystals. But for my techniques, you don't need anything. Like, how cool is that yeah. that you can do this? anywhere anytime and it doesn't take hours a day people are always like oh I don't I can't add one more thing or it seems overwhelming to face our emotions in like in this big way mm -hmm. in this new big way but really I see the most improvement with people who do 20 minutes a day on a consistent basis mm -hmm. rather than do an hour every month or whatever so it's just like working this in to your life like a maintenance like maintenance mm -hmm. we do maintenance for everything else it's it makes true. sense to me it's true <laughs> Um, all right. Well, so I, I guess the last question I want to ask before we um, change gears or switch gears a little bit. Um, so one of the reasons that I wanted to focus on, you know, talking about our bodies in relationship to how we communicate and connect with others is I believe that if we're not tuned into this ecosystem, then it's like impossible to connect, to love, yeah. to empathize with others. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that's really important because I think a lot of our emotional energy gets stuck around our heart space. And if anybody is familiar with Heart Math, are you familiar mm -hmm. with the Heart Math Institute? We've talked, we've referenced it yeah, before in the show. Yeah, perfect. So yeah. they have a lot of amazing information about how our heart sends out signals mm -hmm. to other people and we communicate from with our heart, with this unspoken sort of language of our heart or energy of our heart. Mm -hmm. And so when our heart is buried under old emotional stuff that we've been carrying since we were five or whatever, not only is it hard to express ourselves, but it's hard for other people to reach us. There's this two-way dialogue that happens between our heart and other people's yeah. heart. And so it's really, really important. It's also important for manifestation. When we're trying to draw things in, you know, we have to, we have to allow others and the universe and everybody to kind of get our, get, get our heart's energy in order to then send back what what we're calling for yeah and so i think it's really really important and you know when i get a client who says i'm having a horrible time with my mother or my boss i say the best thing we can do is work on you and then we do yeah. and then it's so funny when we clear their heart field i always hear my boss is suddenly being nicer and it's like see we were we just worked on you yeah and that makes a difference because we're, we have a dynamic energy with every person we interact with. The only way to shift that is for something to shift. And if you can't make them shift because you've already tried, I know it. It's impossible to Yeah, I know. People keep trying. <laughs> and sometimes I do too. Yeah, but um, when, you, when you move yourself just a little bit one way, that has to change the dynamic. And it does. So well, very Well, we know. I mean, I, how many people listening or watching have said, I feel this about you, or I didn't yeah. feel good around this person. Yeah. Or, you know, like, I feel something's wrong. Like, that's what she's talking about. Yeah. Like, we do have, like, this connection. I've never met Amy. We talked on the phone one time. I felt her energy immediately, and I talk about this on the show. I wish people could sit here and feel what I feel when we're talking about these topics to back up the topic, because there's, yeah. there's energy that's supporting what we're talking about. But... So I get it. I don't. It's not too yeah. to me, but you know, maybe I've lived in California too long. <laughs> we both lived in LA too long. <laughs> but no, it's it's not. I mean, it, it it's not because, um, like you, I've been on the other side of this. I haven't had chronic pain as much, but a lot of emotion that just yeah. prevented me from doing anything that I wanted to do yeah. and getting around that. Like, I experience more joy in my life than any other you know emotion or feeling yeah. because I'm working on that. Yeah. 
you know so I know it's possible it is it's possible and I, I will say no I I um, would I used to deal with a lot of like just neck pain like neck and shoulders like uh, you could tell when I was stressed yeah. I'd be like this and um, you know so it went from a place of like catching that and trying to release it to a place where I just don't I'm just not there anymore like yeah. so there's a natural what you were saying earlier there's a natural flow of just like being authentically happy and like yeah. you know happy that I woke up and doing what I want to do and yeah. like that that's preventing that stuff to kind of creep in absolutely so I get it <laughs> all right well before we move on to um, some other segments in the show is there anything that you'd want to share to s someone that just says you know if you're if you're thinking about trying something yeah where would where do you go like what would you st suggest they start with like yeah, so I suggest just starting really small in whatever way you feel comfortable because as we've talked about, being open is really important, but some people just can't get there yet. Mm -hmm. So I would say even trying acupuncture could get you used to the idea of you know energy and how this works. Um, in my book, I have a lot of really simple ways to start and a lot of people get so much benefit just from doing the most simple thing. Yeah. And just just playing around with it, just see how you feel, because yeah. it can't it can't hurt. I I would add to this, and you can agree or disagree. But if you're gonna try and you're going in skeptical, don't waste your money. I mean, yeah. you've got to really go in and going. Well, I have nothing else to lose. Yeah. Why not? You know, like go in in an energy field with someone going. I want. I believe. I want this to work. I'm rooting yeah. for you because I want you to be successful with me. Because yeah. if this or whatever you're offering is successful with me, I benefit. Right, <laughs> and I tell people if you can't be behind it totally, try to be curious. Like try to just have a curious nature, like oh this is interesting, what are they doing? Yeah. Like sometimes it's easier for us to be curious than totally on board from the get-go. Mm -hmm. I mean totally on board is the best because your body responds to, I mean it's really a lot of your mind leads and your body follows. Yeah. There's research, I mean there's science on that now. So you're, you're going to love how I sign off the show because okay. I always say relate with more curiosity because it, it's the easiest way. If there's fear there, like just be, you know, be more curious, ask Let's more just questions. Let's see what happens. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a little safer than going all in. So yeah. And curious. it can be fun if you let it. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Speaking of fun. So <laughs> I, I like to switch gears after we've talked about kind of a heavy topic or a new topic that um, might be exposing people to new information just to get another a, a, a sense of who you are in a different way yeah. um, and just show that at any given time how we're relating can change the circumstances are how we're relating can change and there's always more information available like we could talk about the, what we just yeah. talked about for hours right but we could also talk about you for hours so I want to hear a little bit more about okay. you and this is how we do this we pull a random question from this box okay sometimes they're sometimes they're exactly <laughs> in line with the topic which always cracks That's me funny. up uh -oh, right. she's laughing. Am I in trouble? <laughs> oh, it, I don't know. This is, I have not asked this question. On, <laughs> I'm not even sure how I'd answer this question. Are you ready? Okay, I'll do my best. Uh, um, you're going to have to like tune into something that you Netflixed, um, some murder mystery to answer this question. Okay. How would you murder somebody and get rid of the body? Oh, my gosh. Right? How would I murder someone and get rid of the body? Can I say how I wouldn't do it? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay, I think that's better. Yeah. Okay, so what is that show that I love? Um, how to Get Away with Murder. Okay. I'll tell you what I would never do. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> is do what they did. Well, do you think I'm ruining it for anybody? I don't know. Which Is okay. it this season? Are you just going to spoil no, It's a not. past season? Yeah. I think we can go with it. If it's not the season. Can I just say I would never murder somebody? It's always a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> I, I honestly don't know how I would do it. I can think of all the ways I wouldn't, I but I that's because I wouldn't. I can't even fathom. I love that one of the highlights of this show is I would never murder anybody. I no. think it's a bad idea. I would, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to, that's my PSA for today. Yeah, no murdering allowed. Yeah, do you, you want to pull another card since I sort of. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Let's not answer that. That's a good question, but I'm happy to know well, that. Well, we're, we, this book box really the energy in this room really wants us to stay on crimes okay because right? okay. it's what is the biggest crime you've committed the it's not murder we know oh that. my gosh I've already said I'm a Virgo I don't know if I've ever done anything <laughs> okay let me think okay I'm Speedy, gonna like car stop I've not do you know that I have no cavities and I've never had a speeding ticket I've wow. never had any kind of ticket wow yeah I grew Chief up she's on a test I um, I'm sure I've done I'm sure I've cheated on a test <laughs> 
I think I'm going to bring it a little bit back to doing not energy work, but spiritual. Yeah. I think the worst thing I've ever done is cheated myself by not telling myself the truth about what was good for me. Can I go there? Yeah, I like it. That is a because crime. I yeah. think that's like what like when I look back at why part of why I got so sick. I feel like a lot of it was I didn't tell myself the truth about relationships. I always like was like, oh, this person is doing this because of this. This person is doing this because of this. And I do think our bodies register mm-hmm. that as a, a betrayal or a crime against ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so that's, I would say, I'm actually a pretty good, like, I can't think of a crime. I'm <laughs> sure I've cheated on a test. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. You'll do that. All right. Are you going to make go- me do another card? I, I have to because they're so weird. Okay. Let's, let's, why are we getting crime? I don't know. Well, this one's not. This is Thank fun. Goodness. This is fun. We're off it now. Okay. Is it worse to discover your fly is down, spinach is in your teeth, or toilet paper is stuck on your shoe? Toilet, oh, on my shoe? Okay, maybe spinach on my teeth. Spinach on your teeth. I think spinach on my teeth. Yeah. I thought if toilet paper was stuck like on my jeans, that would be the worst. <laughs> yeah. Shoe, I'm okay with. Yeah, you can kick it away. I'd say. I'm, that's happened to everyone, by the way. Like you go to like a sporting event. Yeah. Those bathrooms are so disgusting. Like it's really happening. Or it happens to someone else and you're not sure what you should do. Yeah. I'm always that person being like, I'm so sorry. This yes. is going to sound weird, but I just have to tell yeah, you this Yeah, I would weird. tell somebody. Yeah, I'm always that I person. would tell somebody that's finished on their teeth. Or I would the other too. one flies down. Yeah. yeah I don't think things. I care so much about fly down. Spinach on my teeth, I wouldn't like. So yeah. that would be the worst for yeah. me. <laughs> especially on, you know, especially if like you're standing right in front of someone and, yeah you know, or you're you do a lot of video someone. like us or something yes. yeah <laughs> want that either. all right well so that was a better question that we was had better to, we had to go we had to go for the third one yeah <laughs> maybe good. those are telling me i should start to write fiction or maybe something, the first one <laughs> maybe maybe i wouldn't crime be, is your theme now today. we know i wouldn't be good at it i, I couldn't know. think of either answers to either of i'm those. a terrible liar i think i have all of these tells and, I, and yeah. i've actually studied body language so i'm always looking for people's like micro signs yeah. like oh you don't you don't like me very much i saw that you That's know like so I saw funny that, like, so i you know concerned with my own and i think that i i I would be a terrible poker player. Yeah. I just don't lie very well. I think, like, the expression is always showing. So I just, love all those crime shows, though. But yeah. I'm always like, this is th- they shouldn't be doing, like, they're going to get caught. It's so obvious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when they're creeping up. Exactly. But, yeah, I do, too. All right. Well, <clears throat> we're at the end of the show already, and we have one last segment to sure. do on the show, and it's what I call Heart's Wealth. And basically, you know, what it is is just asking you to think of a person that has met his meant something to you um that you want to just say something to them because they've inspired you they you know they um they're attached to a goal that you have you know they're just there's just something that you want to acknowledge them for and the reason that i ask everybody to do this is because i believe that there is should be no fear in sharing deep emotion that it, it shouldn't be scary and that the more that we do it the easier that it is and of course, it just raises the level of empathy in the world when we're just share, sharing yeah. how we are connected and being vulnerable in terms of our emotions. So, are you into it? Would I'm you in, totally into it. <laughs> You're yeah, like, of course I of am. Of course, I'm the emotion. I'm not into murder. Yeah, I'm, I'm not into murder, but I am into heart swell. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so when you are ready, share your heart swell to directly to that person. Sure. So I'm actually going to do a group of people. If okay. That's okay. That's fine. So I so my heart swell is for all of my clients and online healing program students because they inspire me all the time when I was going through the exact same things they are now going through I was not as open-minded I was not as willing to try everything I was not as honest with myself or other people who ask and every single day I feel lucky to work with them they are amazing and really inspire me to keep reminding people to tell the truth about who you are to tell it to yourself and then to share it with other people because that is one huge way that we can each heal the world is just by letting someone else know that it's okay to tell the truth about ourselves and it's okay to tell the truth to other people. So that is my heart swell because they make me so proud and I'm in awe all of the time at how much more evolved and incredible they, um, they are and how committed to their healing they are compared to how I was when I was in their place at first defending everything and anything for no good reason at all. So that's my heart swell is I'm so proud of you all and it's my my genuine honor to work with you. Awesome. I hope that a lot of your um, 
a lot of your clients are listening and yeah. can experience that and know that, that they've helped you in your own journey as well. Thank you. Awesome. Well, that is the end of our show. So you can learn more about Amy's work at Amy B. Share, and it's spelled S C H E R dot com. It's on the screen right now, too, Perfect. so they can, they can find you. Um, you know, I usually issue a social challenge for the show, and I didn't pick one for this one, so we might have to pick one together. Sure. I kind of think uh, connected to the theme I'm thinking of and connected to my niece being born, like, Maybe we just need to wiggle. Like, maybe yeah. just like, maybe, you know, yes, explore some of these things that Amy talked about. There, you can search for like energy, um, energy work in your local area and probably find lots of things that you could explore. That's something that you can do and I would encourage. But in terms of like a social challenge, I like the idea of just people like wiggling. <laughs> I don't that know. That sounds great to I me. Know, just like seeing what's there. Um, my acupuncturist is always telling me to do this. Yeah, so I always have clients do yeah. this because I think it helps clear off energy that's sticking to us, yeah. sometimes from other people, sometimes from ourselves. So I say, shake off your arms and legs or yeah. brush yourself off or do whatever. Oh, I, now you just helped me. We just co-created the social challenge. So the social challenge is do that in connection of like going into a big meeting or maybe, um, you know, you're going to have a difficult conversation, really conversation. Just shake it off. You know, do the Taylor Swift thing. Just shake before you go in there, take a moment in the bathroom and see if that shifts anything yeah. and what you thought that conversation was gonna be like or you know, going into a difficult meeting or seeing a family member that you haven't seen, whatever it is, but take the time to shake it off. Yep, I think that's I, it. I'm into it, I think, th I think that's our social challenge. All right, <laughs> co-creation, I love it. Uh, so that brings us to the end of the show. We do have a PSE scheduled tomorrow at the Relational Center. If you are not familiar with what PSC is, it's public shared experience, and it's basically like a yoga class for relating. So many people that come say it's like a vitamin B shot for relating. You leave feeling like truly connected. You were seen and heard. We do a series of exercises. It just, just feels good. It's feel good relating. I encourage everybody to come out. Um, we're, we've got a really great one scheduled for tomorrow. So that's tomorrow night at 7 p.m. at the Relational Center. And as always, like I mentioned earlier, I just encourage everyone to relate with more curiosity. Just start with curiosity. You know, that trumps fear in many cases. So relate with more curiosity. Add a little joy in there and you'll do fine. See you next week. You're listening to Relatable with Stephanie Michelle, only on LA Talk Radio.